Um, tonight we are in a sermon series called Every Day, talking all about how there are several everyday habits that as followers of Jesus we should probably be doing. Uh, this is the last week of this series, nice little two-week series, and tonight is going to lead perfectly into our next sermon series, which is going to be all about how to read your Bible. Yes, guess what? That's important. Uh, here's the thing. I believe God can change your life tonight. I really, really do. And if I'm honest, there's nothing super special about this message because tonight we're talking about the Bible and the importance of reading it because if we say that we're a follower of Jesus, we should probably be reading our Bibles, correct? But I believe that tonight we're going to get a glimpse of man, why should I actually spend time in my Bible consistently? And I think that as we go to God's word to reveal this truth to us, that we will all leave this room changed. And so I wanna pray for us and then we're gonna get into it tonight. God, man, we just wanna thank you for the opportunity to gather together and go and dive into your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just use tonight in a mighty way and that we would all just be able to walk out of here with a better understanding of the reason why we should be reading our Bible day in and day out. God, would you move tonight? We love you. Amen. Okay, so a lot of us in this room, we have friends, correct? Friends, brothers, sisters, some of you said no and you're joking. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, you probably remember at least, at least how you met one of your best friends. You remember the first time you saw them, the first time you were like, wow, this person's really, really cool. And for me, uh, a person that I met that was really, really cool and is now one of my close friends, his name is Jack Sharp. Now, immediately... Immediately somewhere in this room, Jack and Austin have started arguing about who is the closest friend to me. It's okay, guys. I love you guys equally. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Me and Jack are different than me and Austin because me and Austin are pretty much the same person. It's kind of weird, right? Like we order the same thing at a restaurant without even knowing that we're gonna order the same thing that it just happens. And it's like, dude, are we doing this again? And the answer is yes, we are. But the thing with me and Jack is we actually don't have a lot in common. Jack loves to fix vehicles. If I open a car engine, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I can tell you what cylinder the vehicle is because it says on the engine. That's literally all I can do when it comes to a vehicle. And so when I first came on staff at Woods Edge, we and Jack had a very work relationship. We only really talked about tasks that had to get done, but we were always around each other because we worked on the same team and still work on the same team. Um, and <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Anyway, I can't start crying now, and you don't know why. Anyway, um, here's the thing. Just because we spend a lot of time together, all of a sudden, our conversations began to change. Our conversations went from work to personal life, to, hey, how's your family? How's your kids? How are you doing at home? Simply by spending time with Jack, I began to learn more about his life. And we went from just a work relationship to hanging out together outside of work and truly becoming friends. And all that took place because we spent a lot of time together. Because on paper, if you took me and Jack when I first came onto the staff team. You probably wouldn't pair us together as friends. And here's the thing. In this series, we're talking about how we need to get to know God. And the way most times that we develop a relationship is by spending time with that person. 
You don't just simply become best friends with someone without spending time with them, yes? And when someone truly is your best friend, you want to spend more and more time with them. The problem that we run into as followers of Jesus and wanting to have a relationship with him is that we cannot see God. We cannot physically see God. And many of us would probably say that we also cannot verbally and audibly hear God. And so it can be hard to work on this relationship that we say we want to have. We want to have a relationship with God, but we can't see him. So when we talk to him, it just, it doesn't really click in our human minds. But one thing that we can see, one thing that we do have is this. This book called the Bible. And many of us also might say that you don't like to read. Anybody, who doesn't like to read in the room? Anybody, Justin's hand went up so fast, that's crazy. Audiobooks, anybody? Yeah. Audiobooks, yes. Yeah. Audiobooks for the win, for the win. Uh, and in the church world, if we're honest, like we hear, read your Bible, read your Bible. We see those cute Instagram stories of coffee in the Bible, right? Like the Bible is hyped up, bro. But like, for good reason, like we definitely should read this book a lot. But if we're honest, many of us try and sit down and read this book and we only last about five to 10 minutes before our mind starts to wonder or before we physically get up and just give up reading this book because we don't understand what's happening or we're trying to read it to get a feeling out of it and we aren't experiencing the feeling that we actually wanna have. And I get it, I get it. You know, I, I truly, like, I sit there and read my Bible sometimes and sometimes it takes me 40 minutes before I'm like, oh God, that's what you're teaching me right now. And it's like 40 minutes, that's a long time. But man, we are called to meditate on the word of God, to sit in it. But the truth is, man, some of us, me included sometimes, it's just five or 10 minutes and we're like, oh, that's it, moving on. I'll see you tomorrow, Bible. Or it can feel like the Bible's confusing, boring. It's not relevant to your life right now. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. So how does reading this ancient book help us connect with an invisible God? Is this book really the answer to get closer to our creator? Is it worth your time, your effort? Is this actually how we get close to God? Tonight, I hope I can answer all of these questions for us. And we're gonna do that by getting into the word of God. It's funny how most of our answers, even about the book of the Bible, are in the book of the Bible. So let's pray and then we're gonna get right into it tonight. God, once again, we come before you and just ask that, man, that your word, God, we know it's living, but you would just set an example tonight that your word is the living word of God. And that those of us in this room that know you, that love you, that have a relationship with you, but maybe God, we're in the desert right now and we're not connecting with you. God, would that change tonight? Would that change tonight? God, would you change our hearts and our minds tonight? And would you open us up to what it truly means to read this Bible and what you promise us when we meditate on your word? We love you. Amen. All right. I'm excited. Let's do this. Okay. So connection to God every day is important. It's very important because it's going to transform you for the better. It is. Connection to God every day is important because it's going to transform you for the better. Now I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use a gym reference, okay? Bear with me here, bear with me here. Think about spending time with God through reading the Bible the way we think about going to the gym. Let me explain, please. Our brains, we logically understand that if we go to the gym consistently for one week straight, we're probably still not gonna see any results. One week straight, you can work out for seven days straight. 
and you're not gonna see any results. Man, I would even say you could probably go to the gym for a month straight and you're still not gonna see the exact results that you may want. But for some reason, our mind logically understands that. Like we aren't expecting to look like the rock after a month of working out, yes? That's not possible, I promise you. But, but we sit down and we read our Bible for one day and we expect that all of a sudden my life is gonna change completely. Oh man, I'm gonna read my Bible and I'm gonna leave. I read my Bible, I'm gonna feel happy immediately. All my anxiety is gonna go away. And boy, oh boy, could God do that? Oh man, he could. But I promise you that probably isn't going to be what happens when you read your Bible for one day. And why can't I say that with so much confidence? It may be hard. Um, God wants a relationship with us. He doesn't want a once a week meeting with you just to check in on how you're doing and make sure you're doing happy. No, God wants to know you and love you and spend time with you and walk with you. That is what God wants for you in your life. And so, man, I think we need to have a healthy understanding that, yes, sometimes when we sit down and read the Bible, it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. It's going to take discipline to form a habit of reading the Bible. And yes, sometimes you're going to be in numbers that are going to go, God, what is happening right now? It's true. It's going to happen. But it's all a part of God's story. Him wanting to connect with you through his word. The amount of time we spend in the Bible and with God matters because it's a relationship. And the more time we spend in our Bible, the more we will understand who God is and how much he loves us. This process will also begin to renew our minds as we learn the way of life God calls us to and his words start to resonate in our mind. A guy named Paul wrote this in, in Romans here. It's Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing your mind happens by reading scripture, putting it into practice and trying again day after day. Let me read that one more time. Renewing your mind happens by reading scripture, putting into practice and trying again day after day. How many of us would admit that we may say that we are in a dry season spiritually right now, but we aren't giving the Bible the time of day that we should. We would say that we are struggling to connect with God. We don't know where he is, what he's doing, how he's moving, but we are leaving the Bible on our shelf. Renewing your mind happens by reading scripture, putting it into practice and trying again day after day. This has to be a routine in your life a habit that may have to be formed by discipline. What that means is you may not want to do it at first. You may not want to give up an hour of your day to read your Bible. And you're going to have to have discipline to sit down and know that I am giving that hour, that time to the creator who made me because he loves me and wants a relationship with me. Like I said, man, we, we can't expect just to read our Bible on Saturday for 30 minutes and, and then think that we're gonna be close to God immediately that day. We need to seek him out because he wants a relationship with us. As I just said, we must try again. Please don't get, get dis, discouraged or jaded at God because one night in your Bible, you didn't feel anything. You didn't sense anything. Keep going back because he has something for you, I promise. The end result of reading our Bible shouldn't be to feel good or leave feeling better about a decision that we made. 
we shouldn't just read this Bible to go to, to feel good or prove a decision that we made was correct. How many of us will run to the Bible because we want to prove something we did was right? Or because, man, we had a really, really bad day, and so we want to look for something that's going to make us feel good. And so we search for a book in Psalms or for a verse in Psalm that's going to fix our problem for that day. Man, we all do that, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is supplementation. That has been, I'm trying to supplement something in my life with a quick fix. And we search for that all over. And while that's, that's fine, like let's turn the Bible for everything, God wants more than a quick fix for you. He is offering more than a quick fix with the word of God. He calls us to meditate on this word. Psalm chapter one, verses one through two says this, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight, delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Because they practice meditating on it, they have God's truth in their minds at a time when they need it. Man, how much different would our lives look if scripture is constantly in our mind and when a situation happens, when a decision is to be made in our lives and instead of leaning on our own understanding, scripture starts popping up into our mind. And all of a sudden, there's this pressure that's taken off of us. Because it's like, wait a minute. I just didn't rely on myself for that decision, that answer, that choice. The word of God popped into my mind, brought me peace, and I know exactly how to respond in this situation now. There is so much peace in that. But how do we get to that point? We have to meditate and sit in the word of God. And I don't know about y'all, that's the kind of mind I want. That's the kind of life I want to live. Because guys, honestly, there are some situations where it's scary if we honestly admit that we are trying to fully trust in ourselves to try and come up with some sort of answer to problem to solve in our life. And God's giving us a lot of going, man, let's look here. Let's look here. Meditate on the word of God. And there's two verses I have right here that are worth meditating over. We're going to do that right now. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I know that our, our thought lives, our thought patterns can be a very interesting place to live. Our mind can think many strange thoughts within a given day. And when we have a dark thought, a strange thought, what if this verse popped into our mind? Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. And then in that moment, as you may have had a sinful thought, a temptation may come into your mind, this verse immediately pops in your head. And instead of getting down on yourself or having that thought, or saying, man, how could I ever think such a thing like that? Instead of that popping in your mind, a verse from Philippians pops in your mind. And you're reminded that, man, let's think about something excellent, praiseworthy, lovely, true, noble, and you're drawn back to the place where you spent time in, the word of God. Next verse, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Man, you are God's handiwork. Man, I know that many of us, we struggle with this thought that we aren't good enough, 
That could be in any situation, in a friend group, at home, right now in this room. But hold up, what does the Bible say? We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So man, who are you? You are God's handiwork and you, you were created in Christ Jesus to do good, to do good works. That's who you were created to be. So I don't know where you are in this room right now, what you struggle with in your mind, what sin you deal with. I mean, remember Ephesians 2.10. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which because God loves us, he prepared in advance for us to do. What if that verse, verse pops in your mind when you're struggling, when you don't think you're good enough? And that's the power of God's word. As we move on to even more scripture now, Psalm 1, verse 3. So we just read the first two verses, now 3. says that person that we just talked about, it's like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. People who love God's word are like a tree planted by a stream connected to the source of life and taking in water to help them grow. The writer of this Psalm is, is saying that people who meditate and think about God's word are like people who are connected to the, to the right kinds of sources. They are setting themselves up well for life and all that comes with it. And what this means is, on the contrary of this, I mean, if, if we aren't connected to the word of God, then what is our life source? What are we going to to give us life and pour knowledge and wisdom and guidance into our lives? Because God word, God's word offers all of that, perspective, wisdom, and guidance. When we read, study, meditate on, and memorize God's word, we live like a tree connected to a source of water, to a source of life. One of the ways you could think about the Bible is a way to hear from God. We can hear from God through scripture every single day. And so as your pastor if you come to me and you say, man, Landon, I'm really struggling to hear the voice of God right now. I'm really struggling to connect during worship. Man, what is God doing right now? I mean, the first thing I'm telling you to do is turn to your Bible. Turn to the word of God and spend time with God daily because this is our source of life. It cannot be downplayed. It cannot be overshadowed. It cannot be forgotten about. The Bible is our source of life. It is the living word of God. And so it's, it's about time we start treating it like that in our lives. We have to give it a time of day. We have to go, God, I'm gonna meet with you today and go to your word because I wanna pursue this relationship with you. I want to go to the source of life. And not just read it, but as I said, man, are we, are we slowing down and meditating on the words that we're reading? Because very easily, we can say that we are reading our Bible, but it's become a checklist that we just check off. Like, oh, read my Bible today. Cool. What's next? But are we truly meditating and giving the, the word of God time so that we can sit in it and meditate on what God is teaching us? And when we do that, we stop relying on ourselves and start to remember scripture that shapes us in the way we think and the way that we react. The more we show and try to connect with God, the stronger our faith and connection to that source of life will be. As I said, all of this, these are all great things. These are all wonderful things. But the question is always, how do we do that? How do we do that? 
because it takes time, effort, and energy to actually start a habit. Three things. One, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Man, what are the odds that you say, yes, I'm in my Bible every day this week. Day four rolls around, you stopped. Why? No one's checking in with you. No one's holding you accountable. Man, with how technology works nowadays, Bible app, Bible plans, reading plans, people can like the verses that you highlight. Didn't know that. That's pretty cool. There's so many ways. There are so many ways to not do this alone. So please get people to say, hey, man, I am struggling to read my Bible. Would you help me? Would you send me a Bible plan? Man, whatever it takes. If we truly believe this is the source of life, let's get desperate about it. Let's get desperate about it. Man, what's it going to take? How can I do this? Please help me. Please help me. Second one's kind of funny. Start reading. Start reading. Look at that. You got to start somewhere, right? Just start. Obviously, you can start with the gospel because that's about Jesus and he is literally the pinnacle, the cornerstone of our uh, belief, religion, and walk with him. You can start there. Also, you could read James. Why do I say that? Okay, confession time. I'm reading through Psalms or Psalm and it's, uh, it's long. It's very long. And James is super short. It's a super short book. And so I go there, it's nice, it's encouraging. It tells you the way of life. You can also read James. There's some tips for you where to start and how to read the Bible. So just start. Third, think about it. Think about it. What does that mean? Don't leave this room and forget about what I just told you. Think about it. What is it actually going to look like for you to start reading your Bible consistently? Do you have to change your routine? Do you have to flip-flop your routine? What does it look like so that you have enough time to truly give the Bible the time that it deserves? As I close tonight, I want to remind you of all those questions I asked us at the beginning of this message. Is this book worth my time, my effort, Will I actually get close to God by simply reading scripture? Is this book actually the answer to get closer to the God that I say I believe in? And now I want to remind you of the scripture that we just walked through. And I'm going to read it in its entirety this time. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Man, we all need a source of life. Our soul is yearning for something that's actually going to truly satisfy it. Truly satisfy it. I mean, we could spend our whole lives searching, trying to find something that's going to satisfy our soul. And here we see the satisfaction, the connection to the word of life is fine, is found through meditating on the word of God. This is our connection. This is our source of life. This is where we turn when we don't know where else to turn. Right here, our source of life is the word of God. And so as we close today, I want us to take some time to reflect and meditate right now. To do that, to take some time and slow down. So if you could please close your eyes and bow your heads. And before we even pray, man, right now, just you, let's think about it. Think about it. What is it going to look like in your life this week to make that change? To read your Bible consistently. Who do you need to talk to to hold you accountable? What does your new schedule look like? And if you are reading it, man, are we giving it the time of day that it deserves so we can truly meditate on what God is teaching us? Take two minutes, that's it, and just think about it.
All right, next up. Y'all ready for this? All right, we're gonna do something crazy here. Crazy. We're gonna take five minutes. Wow. Just five minutes and let's go before the Lord and let's ask him. I mean, God, what does this look like? Is where I'm at right now in my time with you all that you have for me? Is there more? Is there more? Is there a person in my life that I could be holding accountable to read your word? God, what do you have for me in, in, in your word? God, would you reveal that to me right now? So the challenge is, y'all are gonna be shocked at how long five minutes feels. If you've never taken five minutes in prayer to sit and be still, but this is the challenge. This is what we're asking you guys to do, to sit, be still and meditate on the word of God. So right now, just five minutes, go before God, ask him, what does this look like, God? What do you have for me in my time in your word? God, what do you have for me?
God, we love you, and we just we ask that you would continue to um, reveal yourself through your word. That when we seek you, God, we would find you as we read in your word. Um, and God, you would just teach us what it looks like to, to slow down and just rest with you. To, to slow down and truly be able to meditate on maybe a verse we just read, a, a passage we just read, but that your, your words would become more than just words on a page. But they would truly start to impact our lives. And we would see that your word is truly living. God, we love you. Amen. All right, so that was five minutes. Isn't that crazy? How many did that, 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 that feel like a long time? Anybody? Five minutes? Yeah. It's crazy. And we got to be careful. I go on like a massive tangent right now, but I'm not going to. Um, we have to be careful about how we spend our time and our lives because everything in our lives or on social media is designed for quick attention. Uh, explanation. How many of you, um, when you're sitting somewhere in your house in public, you open your phone and then, you, and then you do nothing on your phone. You just open it and you're like, why did I just open my phone? And you're like, what is actually happening right now, right? It's because you've been trained by social media, by entertainment to need something right in that moment. It's crazy. And that's why five minutes feels like forever because Instagram moves are 15 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Anyway, that could be an entire different sermon for a different Wednesday or Sunday. But the truth in that is, I mean, it's gonna be a battle to spend time with Jesus the way he asked us to. Because a lot of things in our lives are not positioning us for success in that area. It's not positioning us to be able to sit down, read our Bible, and then maybe not look at a screen or listen to anything for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It's crazy. Some of my most edifying time with God, some of the most beneficial time, if you will, uh, with God is when I read my Bible for 20 minutes and sit in silence for 20 more minutes. And it's amazing how those 20 minutes of silence are actually incredibly peaceful incredibly slowing, and I really feel the presence of God when I sit there and I'm not worried about anything. 